Greg Pak and Raphael Anko continue their awesome Into the Fire story arc with some surprising new developments in Vader's new set of trials that sets him on a collision course with the sequel trilogy in some unsuspecting, strange, and action-packed ways. Greg Pak continues to wow me with how much extra character development he is getting out of Darth Vader. A character who you'd think after all of these years can't possibly have that much more to give, yet Pak manages to bring it out in spades. I love how Pak continues to relate the story back to the man Vader was, and in a way still is, since this whole story is about Vader having to purge himself of Anakin Skywalker for good, yet we find him still relying on things from his past that will help him win. It's quite an interesting take and I look forward to seeing Vader's conflicted nature continue and obviously we see it come to fruition in Return of the Jedi. Ochi of Bestoon has also been quite fantastic and I enjoy his characterization as someone who is a skilled assassin and knows what they are doing but also as someone who is incredibly arrogant and cowardly. The connections to the sequel trilogy are also very much welcome and it's not just Ochi of Bestoon since we're also looking to explore Exogol in the upcoming issues as well as the Empress plans there, which was definitely one of the more interesting places that that trilogy went, and if it means we can get any more weird sci-fi horror monsters and settings like teased at the end of this issue, I'm all for it. Raphael Enko's art continues to be fast paced and action packed, delivering some fun and unusual setups for Vader being he can't use the force, so he's got to rely on his skill as a warrior and he's cunning as a warrior. And it leads to some pretty fun horror-esque scenarios of Vader hunting the droids through the smoke of Mustafar. I love how Raphael also shows flashbacks of Vader remembering something about when he was Anakin or how he became Darth Vader in the suit and how it's steeped in this red haze to symbolize Vader's anger for those past memories, the very same anger that fuels him throughout this story. Darth Vader issue 9 continues to impress me with what it is able to draw out of a character who really at this point shouldn't have anything new left to give, yet Greg Pak continues to find new and interesting angles to show Vader from. I'm looking forward to the book heading into sequel trilogy territory and what weird and wonderful things the team has in store for us. I'm going to give this issue a 9.5 out of 10. Darth Vader issue 9 finds the injured Vader pursued through the lava flats of Mustafar by Ochi and his assassin droids. Ochi wants Vader to remember him when he dies, but the droid crush pirates of Bestoon know that they will be the ones remembered since they are doing all the work. Vader manages to escape into the destroyed facility, using its cover to ambush the pirates and kill them off one by one with a Durasteel spike. The droid's thermal cameras refuse to work thanks to the intense heat of the area, which Vader uses to his advantage to hunt them down. Kill them off and even getting them to fire on their own teams. The droid captain enjoys the hunt, now understanding that someone saw value in Vader and someone cared for him and devoted every resource to ensuring his weak flesh endured. The captain knows that he can't hold out much longer however since the flesh is failing him. The droid remembers when Vader said that he wanted their parts, but this time they are going to take his. The droid manages to stab Vader in the leg, destroying the circuitry in it and causing it to malfunction. Vader smashes the droid in the face escaping back into the facility. The captain is angered however, finding Vader is nothing but cheap scrap after picking up a piece of Vader he cut off, confronting Ochi since he promised them high tech. Ochi says that that's probably just a part that Vader scrapped from one of the other droids, but the captain says he got close enough to scan Vader, finding he's made from almost 30 year old junk parts. The captain is angered since he's already lost four droids to Vader and Ochi will pay for it. Suddenly Vader smashes through the door behind Ochi, grabbing the man and pulling him through, knocking him out and taking his lightsaber back. Activating the saber, Vader easily cuts his way through the pirate droids as they bash their way through the door, taking the limbs of the captain and leaving only Ochi left. One of the dying droids wonders if there is something special in Vader's still malfunctioning parts, but the captain says that, that there isn't anything more special in his parts than there is his own. Vader knows that because of that, he maybe can put the captain's parts to better use. Later on, Vader fixes up Anakin Skywalker's old Jedi Starfighter 
fighter with the droid parts. The captured Ochi is impressed with the engineering skills Vader has as he activates the escape pod he also fixed, but Ochi wonders how they are all going to fit into that. Vader smacks him across the face, showing him the wayfinder and demanding the man tell him how it works. Ochi realizes that he's being kept alive so he can help Vader with the wayfinder, which is a good plan since the Emperor's favorite assassin would know a thing or two about his secrets. Taking the wayfinder, he shows Vader the hidden coordinates in the glyphs on it, plugging them into the starfighter. Vader chokes Ochi, throwing him into the pod, knowing that if he set a trap for him, he will be the first to die. Ochi tries to talk himself out of it again as Vader ignites his saber, getting Ochi to promise that he's telling the truth and will show him everything. Reactivating the wayfinder, Ochi gives him the rest of the coordinates that will lead Vader to Exogol. Vader seals Ochi into the pod, getting in his starfighter and magnetizing the pod to the bottom of it. Blasting into space, Vader connects up with the starfighter's hyperdrive ring in orbit, making Ochi panic since the pod isn't rated for hyperspace travel and he can't help Vader if he kills him. Vader says nothing however, activating the hyperdrive and blasting Ochi into the back of the pod. They soon leave hyperspace and Ochi thanks the Sith, learning that he didn't do it for him since the hyperdrive cannot go any further thanks to the red nebula cloud in front of them. Ochi quickly tells Vader to jump, but the Dark Lord refuses, saying that he will find the Emperor's secrets on Exogol, no matter what stands in his way as they are confronted by a giant space monster protecting the nebula. 